This was uh, added to the dock by Alex and the rumors and leaks come courtesy of Notebook Check, Tech Power Up, and Video Cards. And the headline is, NVIDIA's RTX 3080 Max-Q could be 74% slower than the desktop card. I mean, if you paid attention to the numbers when we were reviewing the RTX 30 series, this might not come as a huge surprise to you. But if you weren't looking that closely, I'll give you kind of the Cliff's notes. Compared to the RTX 20 series, RTX 30, in spite of the fact that it's built on a smaller manufacturing process node, is not really significantly faster in terms of performance per watt. So yes, they're a lot faster. Oh, I shouldn't say not significantly faster. Not as much as we've become accustomed to. So yes, right. they are faster, but they are also to an almost proportional degree, just bigger, heavier, power hungrier cards. Um, so it's kind of less like a new generation in that sense, and more like just buying a higher end one. And it seems like NVIDIA... I mean, bless their hearts, as poorly as that turned out for everybody, NVIDIA took any kinds of efficiency improvements that they got out of uh, moving to a smaller manufacturing process and took it straight to price. It blew them out of the water, yeah. You know what's hilarious is that after NVIDIA's terrible experience being, uh, and I mean, for that matter, probably AMD, after the terrible experience that they've had being blamed for you know, shortages because the price is so attractive and everybody wants one, we are never going to get an aggressively priced GPU ever again. Because <laughs> NVIDIA, <Yeah. laughs> NVIDIA oh, is a sucks. company that never forgets, okay? They never yeah. forget. And every time someone comes up with the brilliant idea of, of pleasing gamers or you know, um, going really aggressive on price to spoil the launch of the new consoles or whatever the motivation was, Next time that idea gets floated around the boardroom table, I guarantee you it's going to look kind of like this. Kind of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you showing something? Yeah, the boardroom, boardroom suggestion meme. You know the one, right? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, how about we, uh, you know, sell stuff at a at a good price? No, no, you're done. You're out. You're out. It, that's gone. Out that's the never happening again. So, okay, what does this mean? We could be looking at 3080 Max Q performance in the neighborhood of a GTX 1080 Ti. To be clear, GTX 1080 Ti performance in a laptop. I mean, that's not exactly terrible. That's yeah, that's better than a kick in the teeth. 1080 Ti's can run like almost everything and at the resolutions most laptop screens are going to be running at you're probably going to be fine yeah so, probably going to have yeah. a pretty darn good gaming experience as long as you don't try to turn on rtx um but you know the fact <laughs> that the rtx 3080 desktop card had a 320 watt tdp has been a concern for anyone that was hoping for a powerful mobile variant so what it feels like is while there may be a 3080 like non-max Q, so that would be the max P, even that one is going to be 150 watt. So that whole paradigm shift that took place with Maxwell, which was the uh, 900 series cards from NVIDIA, where they went from having like the desktop lineup, which was up here, and then the mobile lineup, which was like just completely different GPUs. Uh, with 900 series, they brought them almost to performance parity. It was like, it was mind blowing for us at the time because in the past, you know, your, uh, I'm just trying to think of like, yeah, let's go back to like, you know, 7,000 series, like, like the old, old 7,000 series, you know, like a 7,800 GT in desktop was a completely different GPU from a 7,800 GT on mobile. Like the one on mobile would have been like a 7,600. And it was just branded 7800. So getting this uh, sort of branding parity for the GPU, even if they were running at slightly different clock speeds or at different power envelopes, which is what we've seen a lot of lately with max P, that's max performance, and max Q, which is maximum quietness. Um, <laughs> max Q with like sort of different different thermal and power envelopes. 
at least it's still the same GPU. And that still does appear to be the case. So these are still similar classes in terms of how many CUDA cores they have. No, they're not. Oh, I lied. No, okay. That's nope. specifically the difference. Nope, we're going, we're going, we're going back to the old way. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay. What what do we have then, Luke? It just lower everything, lower performance, lower CUDA cores. It's it's a totally intensely different experience to the point where naming them a similar thing is is kind of egregious. Um, I, there's a note in here somewhere, I don't remember exactly where it was, where they hope that they are very clear to consumers about the TGP of the mobile graphics cards. And I hope that as well, because That's not gonna happen. Um, it's, it's not, but uh, not that far in the past, we had like pretty close to performance parity between the mobile and the desktop cards. Yeah. Um, and now we are, we have completely thrown that in the garbage. Uh, and that's, that's not a good thing for consumers. I don't actually necessarily think it's that big of a deal in terms of like what you're going to be able to do. I think the vast majority of mobile gaming experiences will be just fine if you're yeah. able to get like 1080 TI level of performance, but what you're expecting and like what you're reading online versus what you're going to get is probably going to be a confusing experience for a very large amount of consumers that aren't extremely dialed in. Yeah. So let's go through some of these speeds and feeds because they do kind of matter. If tech power up is correct, the RTX 3080 max Q, so that's the more power efficient model will have an 80 watt TDP. So that's total, uh, what is it? Thermal design power or total design power or whatever it is. So basically it's allowed to consume 80 watts and it'll be clocked at 780 megahertz base, 1245 boost. For reference, that boost is less than the base clock of a desktop 3080. So desktop 3080 is 1440 base, 1710 a a boost. That's yeah, it's, it's not off by like 50 or something. Like it's yeah. the, the, the boost is off by a considerable amount than the base. And it uses the same GA104 GPU. So it is still the same silicon-ish, but the Max-Q is going to have only 61,044 CUDA cores enabled compared to the desktop's 8704. So it's more than just a clock. Yeah, it's more than just a clock speed difference. So both of those things, if you drop your CUDA cores by 20%, you are basically looking at a 20-ish percent performance drop. If you drop your clock speed by 20%, you are basically looking at like a 20% performance difference. If you do both of those things, they kind of stack. Like it's it's not it's, quite. It's not just the 40% because of 20% yeah. from both. It's like, it's worse. No, no, it's it's less worse. It should be less oh, worse than bad. that. But it's, it's still, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, there's some good news though. So the 3080 Max P will be 150 watts and boost up to 1545 for those who do need more performance. But because that's a 150 watt GPU, you can expect that to only be present in either very thick or very cleverly designed laptops. Now, when Luke says that this is a bad thing for consumers, he doesn't mean like, you know, oh, it's tragic. We're going to have fewer FPS for our games. Yeah, no. Will no one think of the gamers? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. It's just that it's bad for consumers when marketing versus reality doesn't have a strong correlation. And if especially when, and I, I would I would bring this up too. Is like I, I mentioned the like not that long ago we found this performance parity between mobile and desktop cards. That was, uh, I would say at least rather heavily marketed yes it was absolutely that we have that we have the future is that we have accomplished this goal of mobile cards and desktop cards coming together and essentially being the same thing that was like it is going to be this way now um was how that communication felt yes and it for did. it to be not that long since then and now we're in a situation where it's like very very notable and rather intense performance differences yep. is kind of a shame i mean you say not that long but it's long enough that i kind of got used to this being how it was going to be forever ish so yeah even even Two gens. Yeah. It, it would be very easy to accidentally buy the wrong thing like you could buy yes with yeah. okay so there are 10 plus different models at the various different uh, frame buffer amounts 
and uh, like thermal and power limits, 10 plus different models that will be called RTX 3080 mobile with very different performance characteristics. So you could easily be trying to compare, you know, this thin and light laptop with an RTX 3080 and this super heavy chonky thing with an RTX 3080 and they're the same price and think, oh, well, they're, well, they both have an RTX 3080. I'll just get the one that's like thinner and sexier. But the difference in performance could be enormous. And really it dark. could even yeah. get to the point, in fact, probably will, where you could have like a chunkier laptop design with an RTX 3070 Max P, so that's a max performance, that would be more performant than a thin laptop with an RTX 3080 Max Q. Even though the thick one is cheaper, it could actually be faster with a lower model number. So, ah, <laughs> I mean, it almost it's, it's almost gotten to the point where like, it feels like kind of uh, kind of how you know eighty plus stepped in and was like, okay, there needs yeah. to be like a third party that certifies power supplies for their efficiency. To be clear, eighty plus is not a perfect system. Oh at geez, yeah. And how the heck would you apply that here at all? But, but I, I see where you're going, though. I think there w I think there could be a way to apply it. I think that if if Nvidia and AMD got in touch with Steve from Gamers Nexus and were like, <laughs> okay. Design us no, I'm serious. The Nexus rating. Design oh us, God, yeah, I design us a, a Nexus, a Nexus <laughs> rating system for how fast the graphics card is for this thing. I think something like that could actually have a value at this point. I know, I know 3D Mark exists. I'm aware of it. Uh, but it's 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 terrible. <laughs> it's not it doesn't tell us anything really useful just because of the way the scores are derived and the fact that they don't really uh, correlate to real world performance in actual games. And I have no idea how, you know, this certification system could ever get off the ground because game developers would have to license their games for use in testing. And you might think, oh, well, game developers would love this because it's just extra exposure for their game. Why would they ever say no? But I had the most bizarre experience not ever, because I've seen a lot of bizarre stuff being in this industry for this long. But I had a very bizarre experience in an Intel showroom at one point where they were showing off some next generation onboard graphics or something. And on the little card next to the prototype, it was like, uh, can run Fortnite at playable uh, frame rates at these settings. And then the game that they were running on, it was like Counter-Strike. And I was like, Hey, so you guys know that Fortnite is like the biggest thing in the world right now. Why is Fortnite not running on the laptop? And they're like, because we couldn't get them to agree to let us run it for the demo. That would actually be kind of cool. Like a, a sticker from a third party agency that gave you five to 10 even uh, current, like, I'd say important to the average yep. consumer games and their certified performance levels. Yep. That yeah, would so be this pretty is, cool. This is, I mean, there are system integrators that try to do this to an extent. So they'll, and there are some that even try to spit out how many FPS that you'll get. Um, so it's not like this doesn't yeah. exist on an SI level, oh. but it's not being done well at all on mobile. And I would like to see like your, your 30, 60 and plus things for each game like th these are the settings that you can run to get this frame rate certified on this laptop that would be cool i think that would be genuinely very helpful for consumers not like one score for the laptop as a whole but mm -hmm. like a bunch of different games because drivers and stuff are going to be issues there yeah that's uh, fair that's actually yeah that's not a bad idea so this is like an a for uh, Fortnite and it's like a, a B for Call of Duty and it's a C for Cyberpunk because nothing can run. Yeah, because you could have a, a, a gamer that's only really interested in like Fortnite, League of Legends and Counter-Strike. Um, and if it, if it scores really highly in those games, then great. They don't really necessarily care about the rest. The only way to really do that is to keep industry from like influencing it though. Like, because think about it. Think about how much pressure there's going to be. So if I'm Best Buy, right? So let's look at all the players, right? So there's the manufacturers, there's the game developers, 
there's the retailers, the resellers, okay? So these are, these are a few of the players that are gonna be trying to exert influence on a program like this. If I'm the manufacturer, I want only the games that are going to reflect favorably on my machine to be shown on the, the little tag, right? Okay, yeah. If I'm yeah, a game yeah. developer, I don't want my game used to validate any machine that it's a bad experience on. I'd just rather you don't mention me at all. If I'm a retailer, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to put anything. I mean, you, you know the you know good, better, best, right? You know, in terms of product segmentation, nobody ever wants to call anything bad. So yeah. Yeah, everything yeah. has to be good, That's better, right. best. Yeah. And then if yeah. I'm a truly independent certification body that wants to provide meaningful information to consumers, I have to be able to say, no, look, I need to be able to put an F on something. I have to be able to fail something or give it a C. And, and you know what, sorry, CD Projekt Red, I'm sorry, but you know, the vast majority, like there's literally no machine on the shelf of a Best Buy that is going to provide <laughs> an A experience in this game. So that's just the reality of it. I'm sorry, I can't move the bar for you. But every one of those, and so every one of those players is able to exert pressure because manufacturers can just say, okay, well then we just won't submit our machine for certification. Game mm -hmm. developers can say, okay, then we just won't license you to use our game for your testing. And retailers will say, okay, well, then we're just not going to put your certification on the shelf because it makes the products look bad and hurt sales. So if you don't, if you don't give in to our pressure and just give everything an A, then we just won't use it. And there's no way to win. I think See, the only potential way that I wouldn't even get around all those concerns at all, but it would hopefully maybe alleviate them a little bit, maybe enough, I'm not sure, is to only show the things on there that get that good sort of good, better, best certification. Everybody's going to try to get you to not show anything bad until there's nothing left to show and there is no certification program. <laughs> so, well, no, because there would be some things that the computer is going to be good at. Um, or it's not a gaming PC, like kind of one of the two. Yeah, but it just, it ends up not meaningful because if all you can say is good things, like, I don't know, I get a lot of people complaining to me that I'm too critical. Like, why are you so critical? It's like, but because it's my job. If all I said yeah. was good things, I would just be the product manufacturer. Why don't you just go on their website? Why do you bother watching my video <clears throat> if all you want to hear is good things? And you kind of need both sides. You need super critical and you need kind of more positive angles, I guess. I embrace my role. Yeah. So, yeah, if you, even if you started out with the best of intentions, I just I just don't think that a program like that could work. Now, I mean, talking about it makes me like want to do it. Like, oh yeah, this wouldn't be that hard. You just get laptops in, you could kind of automate all the testing to a significant degree. It spits out a report that basically goes, yeah, here was the acoustics and thermals the whole time. So you could basically just like you drop it in uh, an acoustic chamber uh, you get, could totally do it. You could totally do it. You could totally do it. It would be freaking awesome. And then it just spits Line out this report. probably wouldn't even need, um, Line Detectives probably wouldn't even need like support from anybody. You could just do it. We could just do it. It would be, it would be a significant upfront investment in proper testing equipment because you can't tell the story yeah. of FPS until you tell the story of thermals and acoustics, especially with a completed device like a laptop. Because remember, that's the concern. With desktops, from my perspective, it's basically on you if you buy a case that doesn't have any ventilation and your graphics card doesn't perform properly. Like, if you're building a system, then you kind of have to do a little bit of research. But when you buy a completed goods product, like a laptop, that's been, in my opinion, misleadingly marketed in this case, I think you have a right to have a number that's actually meaningful shown to you. And yeah. there's all kinds of other problems because, you know, for example, uh, some manufacturers have multiple modes that the laptop can operate in. So testing ones like that could become a very, very cumbersome process where you have to like put it in CPU OC mode and then fan turbo mode, and then non-CPU OC mode, and non-fan turbo mode, and then GPU OC mode, and then fan, like, so you're testing the same system, you know, eight, 10 different times with all the different you, variants. You really want to automate it for sure. Yeah, but there's a lot of those things that wouldn't be possible to automate. Like you'd have to come back and press the button to put it in, you know, silence optimized mode 
and then sure, yeah, run it again. Yeah. 